Welcome, my fellow ponderers of the peculiar and the profound. Today we find ourselves entangled in the intricate web of Sir Isaac Newton's laws of motion. You know, those three laws that have been the bedrock of physics since the 17th century. Now you might be thinking, I'm no scientist. What's this got to do with me? Well, let me tell you, these laws aren't just for the lab coat wearing beaker toting folks. They're at play in our everyday lives. From the morning coffee that refuses to stay in your cup while you're running for the bus, to the way your shopping cart veers to the left, no matter how much you try to steer it straight. Yes, my friends, Newton's laws are everywhere. And they're not just about apples falling from trees. They're about the toast that stubbornly lands butter side down, the car that just won't start on a winter morning, and the uncanny ability of your cat to always land on its feet. So, buckle up and put on your thinking caps. We're about to dive into the world of physics, where toast is not just breakfast, but a scientific experiment. Ever tried to get out of bed on a cold morning? That's inertia, Newton's first law in action. Now you might be thinking, what's this inertia you're talking about? Well, my friend, inertia is essentially the universe's way of saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's the tendency of objects to resist changes in their state of motion. Picture this, you're all cozied up in your bed, the temperature is just right and your alarm goes off. You hit the snooze button once, twice, maybe even three times. Why? Because you're comfortable. You're in a state of rest and you want to stay that way. That's inertia. Or let's take a different scenario. You're driving down the highway, the wind in your hair, Bohemian Rhapsody blasting on the radio, when suddenly you see a red light up ahead. You slam on the brakes, but your car doesn't stop immediately. It wants to keep moving. That's inertia too. Inertia isn't just a physical phenomenon, though. It's a universal law that applies to everything, even our minds. Ever tried to switch off your brain after a long day of work, but found it running a marathon of thoughts instead? That's mental inertia. So inertia, in a nutshell, is the cosmic law of laziness. It's the reason why things at rest like to stay at rest, and things in motion like to stay in motion. It's why we find it hard to get up in the morning or stop our cars on a dime, so next time you can't get out of bed, blame Newton. He discovered inertia after all. Thank Newton for that. Oh, Isaac Newton. Not only a whiz with an apple, but also a genius when it comes to explaining why we can't just fling around heavy objects willy-nilly. Enter stage right, Newton's second law of motion, also known as force equals mass times acceleration, or for the Latin lovers among us, our F equals sign ma. Let's break this down a bit. Imagine you're pushing a shopping cart. Feels pretty easy, right? That's because it has a low mass and it doesn't take much force to get it accelerating down the cereal aisle. Now picture trying to push a car. Suddenly you're sweating, straining, and seriously considering a gym membership. That's because the car has a much higher mass. According to our buddy Isaac, you need to exert a greater force to achieve the same acceleration as that lightweight shopping cart. Now, let's talk about lifting heavy objects because who doesn't love a good workout analogy? Picture yourself lifting a feather. Hardly a Herculean task, right? Now replace that feather with a dumbbell. Feeling the burn yet? That's Newton's second law in action again. The heavier the object, that's the mass. The more force you need to apply to lift it, that's the acceleration. So in a nutshell, the second law tells us that the force needed to move an object is directly proportional to the mass of the object and the acceleration we want to achieve. It's why pushing a boulder uphill feels like a Herculean task, while rolling a ball across the floor is a piece of cake. And it's not just about pushing or lifting things. This law applies to everything from how hard you need to kick a soccer ball to make it fly, to how much fuel a rocket needs to escape Earth's gravity. So before you try to push your friend's car out of the mud, remember Newton's second law, you might need a bigger breakfast. Ever jumped off a small boat and sent it flying in the opposite direction? That's Newton's third law for you, but hold your horses. We're not about to dive into a complex physics lecture. No, we're here to explore the fun side of this law, the side that impacts our everyday life in ways we barely notice. Newton's third law, in its simplest form, states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now let's break this down. Imagine you're sitting in a small boat, enjoying the serene beauty of a lake. Suddenly you decide to jump off the boat. What happens? You move forward and the boat, it moves backward. That's the third law in action, pun intended. But it's not just about boats and bodies of water. This law is everywhere. Take a moment to consider walking. 
Yes, the very act of putting one foot in front of the other. Every time you take a step, you're pushing the earth down, and in reaction, the earth pushes you forward. It might feel like you're in control, but in reality, it's all about the push and pull of forces. Ever witnessed the recoil of a gun? That kickback that pushes the shooter backward when the bullet is fired? That's the third law right there. The bullet moves forward and the gun moves backward. Action, reaction. It's fascinating, isn't it? How this law subtly shapes our daily interactions with the world around us. From stepping on the ground to jumping off a boat, from firing a gun to simply breathing in and out, the third law is a constant unseen companion. So the next time you jump off a boat and send it flying, don't blame yourself, blame Newton. He came up with the third law. So, we have seen how Newton's laws are not just textbook theories, but a part of our everyday life. Let's take a moment to glance back at what we've explored today. We kicked things off with a discussion on inertia, Newton's first law. We saw how it's not just about objects staying in motion or at rest, but also about the resistance to change in our own behaviors and routines. The Saturday principle showed us how a lazy weekend morning can easily turn into an entire day of relaxation unless an external force, say, the prospect of a late fee on a library book, compels us to get up and get moving. Then, we dove into the second law, the one that tells us that force equals mass times acceleration. Here, we learned that the heavier an object or issue is, be it physically, mentally or emotionally, the more force it takes to change its state, it's why that big old couch is so hard to move, and why deep-rooted habits or beliefs can be so difficult to change. Finally, we tackled the third law, the one about every action having an opposite and often exaggerated reaction. We all know this one. It's the law of the land in sitcoms and comedic movies, where a simple misunderstanding can lead to a series of hilariously overblown reactions. So there you have it. Newton's laws, they're not just for physics class. They're embedded in our everyday life, shaping our experiences and interactions. Remember, the next time something in your daily life makes you scratch your head, it might just be one of Newton's laws in action. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, keep questioning.